Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Alonso Osorio with the Foreign and International Medical Graduate Podcast. I'm extremely excited to be here. This is my pilot episode from my YouTube channel. In this uh, process, we've been working at it about three to four years in the making. I had a dream. I had a goal and finally I found the right moment of my life to get some wonderful information back to you guys. Who am I? Um, a normal person like you all. I'm a foreign medical graduate from Colombia, South America. I'm a proud graduate of a public university called Universidad Industrial de Santander in my city, Bucaramanga, Colombia where I graduated from medical school in 2001, December 22nd, followed by uh, an internship at Hospital Ramon Gonzalez Valencia, and then immediately after that, my rural service at Hospital San Juan de Dios de Giron in uh, a rural town a little bit, uh, 50 miles away from my city, not, not too far out, but just enough to get some decent exposure to rural medicine. And I've been here in the US for the last 19 and a half years. I'm currently 42 years of age and I have spent half my life in the US, half my life in Colombia. Exactly this year, it's been uh, the anniversary of having accomplished that. I came into the US in 2000, July, 30th with many hopes and expectations. I came to Miami, Florida after having gotten some observerships at the William J. Harrington Latin American Training Programs at Jackson Memorial Hospital through the University of Miami to fulfill 12 months of observerships. Why am I here? As I said, I came to this country initially as a competitive tennis player. I was hoping to potentially play professional tennis. Things didn't quite pan out the way I wanted them uh, for many particular reasons to be a professional tennis player. I, I noticed that I had some li limitations. And at that point in time, due to my sports accomplishments and my academic uh, success in Colombia, I was given the opportunity to get into medical school without taking the test or really having gone through the filtering process using the SAT, the Colombian version. And it was a matter of take it or leave it. I gave up everything here in the U.S. tennis related and I went back to Colombia. I was there for uh, the first uh, six years in medical school and my internship and then the one year of rural service. And I always wanted to come back. I thought that this country is good at something, at many things, but he, this country is really at recognizing those that work hard. I, I noticed early on during my professional tennis career that those that succeed are the ones that put in the hours, that put in the effort, that have the dedication and have people be behind them that make them uh, be successful. You need a financial assistance, a spiritual assistance. You need some sort of social network to help you and get behind you to make you succeed. So I want to take this opportunity to thank my father, Eliseo Osorio, my mother, Luz Elena Giraldo de Osorio, my brother and my uh, deceased uh, grandparents that were the supporters behind the dream of me of becoming a doctor in America. I've been now in medical practice since I obtained my degree 20 years. I'm happily married. I have two little kids. My oldest just turned seven. My daughter will be turning five in April. And I've been practicing emergency medicine for now 10 years. I am dual uh, or double boarded. Um, I started my training in family medicine at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And then I followed that with uh, three years more of an independent uh, 
residency training in emergency medicine. For those that are not uh, medical people in the United States, family medicine is the degree that you obtain to become a general practitioner. In Colombia, after finishing medical school, you can practice general medicine. But in the U.S., you have to fulfill three years of training in family medicine, which covers the spectrum of the healthcare needs from the newborn all the way to the last days of your life, gynecologically, obstetrically, sometimes surgically. And we become the head physician in many parts of the United States, especially family physicians that practice old-fashioned general medicine are located mostly in rural America. That's why my training program, I would say, was phenomenal because it was located in Omaha, Nebraska. And it was just the perfect setting to, to, to grow family physicians. And emergency medicine on its own in the United States is a specialty by itself. And we specialize on the acute care of any medical emergency. We take care of strokes, MIs, traumas of any sorts of fashion, psychiatric emergencies, medical, cardiologic, neurologic emergencies, you name it. The problem with the healthcare in America is that the private healthcare, the, the, the primary healthcare system is broken and no one has access to a decent primary care. And if they do, it might take you three months to get into a doctor if you're not an established patient. Obviously, I'm not going to go into the factors why the system is failing to serve the American citizens. But as a family, as a family physician, I see myself working as an ER doctor in the emergency room doing mostly primary care for the people that come into the doors of the emergency department. Why is that? For those listeners that are non-medical and the ones that are medical that might be acquainted with this whole situation, there is a law that was established in 1986 by the President Ronald Reagan and the federal government called the EMTALA, Emergency Medicine Treatment and Active Labor Act uh, of 1986 that made the physicians pretty much uh, avoid patient dumping. Uh, disregarding your ability to pay your racial background, if you're a legal or illegal immigrant, if you have insurance or not, if you have any ability to pay or not, you're mandated to get a medical screening exam. And that's sometimes what people don't understand. They hope to go to the emergency room and get all their chronic medical issues resolved. But really the reason why we are there is to make sure that you're not having a life-threatening or limb-threatening emergency. If you don't, you get home, you get triage in the proper manner, and if you're having a real emergency that requires acute interventions, you obviously will be coming into the hospital and will be fixing that and taking care of that. That was my dream. That's what I wanted to be. Everything started very early on since I was a teenager watching the famous uh, now uh, pretty old TV show called ER, Emergency Room, in which um, I saw these doctors practicing a type of medicine that is not available in Colombia. Emergency medicine, unfortunately, is not uh, very strong in our country. There is a few residency programs that are training emergency physicians, but I don't know if the healthcare system has gotten up to par to provide the standard of medical care that we have in the United States. And I don't mean disrespect to my colleagues outside the country, but um, you know, I'm here more than willing to be able to help you and come and improve the healthcare systems in uh, South America and why not in my native country. Um, I'm also here to put some free content and some free education. I'm here to tell you my story. I'm a normal person like any of you, just had a passion and a desire to succeed. I have put thousands of hours and tons of effort financially, spiritually, sacrificing my personal life and enjoyment, weekends, nights, long hours to be where I am. I have nothing to complain about. I have everything that I ever wanted. I have a fantastic house, uh, 5,000 square feet, you know, and two acres of land. And, you know, you make six digits uh, numbers, but uh, 
that's not everything in life. I think I have reached maturity as an emergency physician, as a person, and I was not finding what I really wanted uh, in my medical career as a director, and I thought that there was something missing. And I had been putting this off, this project of me to give you some uh, motivation to make it into America as a, as a physician. I want to give you the steps. I want to give you the elements, the ingredients, the things that you need to do, the way that you need to think, the way that you need to project yourself to become a successful physician in this wonderful country. Uh, I owe to the United States everything that I have, uh, specifically my graduate medical education was covered by the taxpayer of America, so thank you, you all. For those that don't know it, the graduate medical education is funded by tax money uh, that is given to the residency programs and the universities in the United States, the hospitals to train physicians like me. Foreign medical graduates like me make about 25 to 30% of the workforce in the United States. In America, it's highly likely that your doctor will be a foreigner, probably with a last name like Dr. Patel, more than, you know, Dr. Smith or Dr. Robinson. Uh, we have become a fundamental part of the healthcare in the United States. And many of us have been successful. Not all of us have phenomenal stories, but at least my story is a story of motivation. It's a story of success, and I want to bring it to you. What's my goal? My goal of being here, uh, putting this free content through my podcast, is to gather a community in which we're going to get together and give feedback to each other. I want you to be extremely active, participate, ask me questions, give me feedback, connect to each other, create a social network. I might not be an expert, but I'm going to try to bring the experts to talk about many topics that I'm not uh, familiar with or that I'm not up to date. You have to understand that I've been out of practice for uh, out of uh, graduation for 20 years, and it's been 20 years since I took my steps. So I have dedicated quite a bit of my personal free time, like today, a Friday, to read things that are the most current in this literature, and I'm gathering the people to get us the right type of advice and motivation. I want to read something briefly that I had gotten together and in my episode number six that I call I Found My Passion, I stated really clearly, I found my passion. If you are passionate about what you do, then you're going to find joy in this process. And when you're passionate, you're as twice as good as anyone else, better than any other applicant. You must know yourself and what will be the end result. Never give up, never hesitate. Despite a very long path of multiple efforts, I succeeded, so you can do it as well. So my example is just one of many, but my passion drove me and made me overcome adversity, and my competitiveness got me here. I don't know if it's grit, if it came from having had played competitive tennis for many years, but I always try to show people that I'm extremely passionate about the work that I do and I love what I do and it has come the time for me to provide you with feedback and information to make you succeed in the United States. So my goal in my podcast is to gather this community literally across the world. I've been remarkably humbled by the fact that my podcast as of today has had more than 2,100 downloads. We have reached over 40 different countries, uh, countries that I never thought that I was going to reach in Africa, countries in Asia, countries in South America, Australia, you name it. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to invite people like you to tell me a motivational story. I'm not a meaning to be a motivational speaker. I'm just here to provide free content for you guys. I want to connect this YouTube channel with my podcast, uh, which you can find on the platform from Apple called iTunes Podcast. And you're going to find a link right here below in the show notes 
on how to get there. We're available not only on that platform, but we're also on a Stitcher Radio, a Spotify, and SoundCloud, among others, that will be launching soon. Obviously, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a brand new website, fmg-imgcast.com. And I'm available there also for consulting and mentorship. It's been a lengthy path. I'm extremely thankful of the many people that have supported me, my family, Dr. Kelly O'Keefe that gave me the opportunity to train in the United States, and to every single person that this, uh, during these 20 years uh, has gotten me where I am, the nurses, the paramedics, the technicians, the psychologists, my colleagues, and my wife. My wife, my kids, my wife has been a huge, successful, strong person behind me to make me accomplish the, all the things that I have done, and uh, she's the organizer of my life. And with that being said, I want you to please give me feedback, connect to my podcast, and connect to my YouTube channel. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to directly link itself to the podcast and I'm going to try to load some of the interviews that we have had in uh, Skype and Zoom uh, on this uh, YouTube channel. I hope the quality is good enough for you guys. I hope to get some quality information to you all. And please uh, subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Leave me some feedback. Leave me some comments. And go to iTunes, leave me a review. It will be greatly appreciated to a new podcast like mine. It will literally help me get up on the rankings. FYI, I am 29th in the medical podcast in the country of India, which has almost 1 billion citizens, so I think it's a big deal. Um, thank you to my sound producer, my editors, and... We'll be here for you. Thanks for reaching out. My email account is Alonso, A-L-O-N-S-O, J, Osorio, O-S-O-R-I-O, at fmg-imgcast.com. You will find it here in the show notes as well. Please subscribe. Show the love. Give me a thumbs up. Five-star review if you think I deserve it. And we're going to have fun. I can assure you. We'll see what the future brings to, to, to this community. Thank you for joining.